Welcome back to the Ink Sync. I am Annie. I'm Kaylee. This is the publishing podcast for the rest of us, where we cover books and news and writing and reading, and we are so excited to bring you today our favorite news. That's right. So here is an article by Teen Vogue, which is like, where censorship is an issue just in every aspect of mm-hmm. our lives. And obviously, everybody's concerned about like protecting the children. But when the children are the ones producing the content, no, and no. then you're... They're like, no, not like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you're going to suppress them. Like, where where's your... Like, you don't even have the thin veneer of your argument to... Like, no, there's no legitimacy anymore. Anyway, so... um. What we're talking about now is there is uh, in Nebraska, Grand Island, uh, which is a smallish city in the state of Nebraska, as I said, a local school, quote unquote, paused its student newspaper after they published um, an article. Their June edition was basically pride focused. Um, Now, this was in response to a recent policy shift of students not being able to use any name that wasn't on their birth certificate. Um, which is just across the country, people are trying to suppress transgendered rights, which is terrible, and trans rights are human rights, etc. We 100% believe that. Absolutely. So that is just one of the many things that is happening in the country that we are all trying to fight. So in response to that, um, and obviously also just being Pride Month, they probably already have much much of this content already planned. Um, The newspaper published a full uh, edition that was Pride-focused. Right. And then the school shut the paper down. Of course, the, the school themselves, you know, said it's not because of this one incident or whatever. What do you mean? We know that there was some articles in there that were pride focused, but no, it wasn't that at all. And it was very obviously that. Like, let's all be clear. We know. We didn't, yeah. We done been new. Like, in fairness, we are very biased and Teen Vogue is very biased. And clearly the kids who went to Teen Vogue about it were very biased. But also, like, when you put the facts in order, it's hard to see a different story. Yeah. Yeah, so the um the high school's Viking Saga newspaper, that was the name of it, which was a pretty cool name, good for them. Agreed. Uh, the students attempted to publish their Pride edition after they were told by the school board that they could no longer use names not on their birth certificates and said that they knew that the administration was trying to do taking our names and pronouns away. So we wanted to make a stand while still following the rule. So good they were attempting to act in good faith, which just goes to show that these people that are arguing that they're attempting to protect children are not. And they're just trash people. Sorry. Right. Because they're, they're hypocrites. Then at punishing any, at, these children. At best, they're yeah. hypocrites. I was heartened, obviously, to see that Teen Vogue had talked about this and it made national news. I haven't seen any updates come through. My hope is that they'll give them their newspaper back. Um, even if it's just the newspaper team, this is their form of passive resistance. And honestly, like one of the main talking points lately has been how, you know, violent resistance is not the answer. You need to have these passive meaningful resistance movements and this is what this was these kids were like we disagree with this policy this is us fighting back and they were punished for it and now they are receiving the attention that they should have received absolutely i don't know if this will change everything in that small town in nebraska no i mean it's just it is an interesting like uh, like to put things into perspective for all of these Mm -hmm. like book bans that are focused on quote unquote protecting the children and people that are you know trying to protect the children with these pronoun bans and name bans and all that like you're hurting your children mm-hmm. like i can't like this is expressing it you know very clearly right now so i don't like don't lie to yourself like don't li- don't lie to me i know <laughs> i know what you're saying like but at this point right. i can only assume you're either actively lying to both of us or you're just lying to yourself because I sure as shit aren't buying it. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're we're on the same page here. Um, anyway, support trans youth, support all queer youth. Uh, Community outreach is your best bet. Absolutely. Um, if you can find a local organization that's supporting LGBTQ youth in your area, please support them because it is so, so important. Uh, moving on, uh, I found this... Reddit thread that I thought was absolutely fascinating. And if we talk long enough about it, I might make it its own main segment. We usually see the other end of this, and I'm going to intro it in a minute, but 
basically a lot of times we talk we've probably even talked about this in the podcast. I don't I don't know off the top of my head about how men are horrible about writing women and how they think that like we have prehensile breasts that move with our emotions or something <laughs> or they think that like we orgasm from our toes or something it's like really strange weird, weird things it's so a lot of romance books are kind of famous for you know depicting women very strangely there are entire like twitter and tiktok and you know tumblr accounts of just like excerpts of a man essentially describing a woman in a way that makes absolutely no sense so we hear about this a lot and it's always very funny because, you know, it's just like, ugh, have they never met a woman? Did they never ask a woman if this is how this works? And this uh, thread came to us from Reddit on the R Ask Men sub. And the person asked, what is something women who write male characters often get wrong? And I had like a little mind blown moment because I'm like, of course women get things wrong about men all the time. I'm sure it's at least the same rate. What did you think of this when I sent it to you? Oh, I actually was so... In okay, so here's the thing. I mean, we frequently... This comes up, I feel like, probably way too often. So let me just kind of give some some perspective to my answer in, mm. in that I think that the issue is very prevalent in, in, in the spaces that we're speaking of. It is a pendulum. So I think in... Oh published media more traditionally published media you see a lot more of the male authors mm -hmm. whereas especially in the creatively published media online self-publishing self yeah uh -huh, you see a lot more female authors and that's mm -hmm. where you're seeing i think and when i was reading through the thread a lot of the comments were about original published fiction or fan fiction mm -hmm. and that's where they were like well this is where i see like a lot of female authors yeah. you know trying to that romanticizing relationships or whatever, but it just happens to be like with a dude, whereas otherwise I've only ever seen like this sort of interaction between like two women or well, friends. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's, I, so I have actually seen this argument before and it's mm. just because I'm in that, you know, the sure, space. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Been, so you have more, even more insight. I've been in the creative fandom space for my like th three quarters of my adult life. My grandma got me into <laughs> fan fiction, like from the X files when I was like 12 or something. Sure, so yeah. like, these ar arguments have come up multiple times and it's very interesting to, to think about like in that context because I definitely knew that there were dudes that felt uncomfortable in fanish spaces because they felt either that they were misrepresented in writing. And I think that lately things have been picking up and people are more open to, to feedback. Um, and, and, certain, and it's, it's going to be different in different fandom spaces because mm -hmm. you've got a different age groups and you've got different perspectives. Like, for example, like the Star Wars space that I'm in currently in right now, we're very open to taking in feedback internally, but also like it's about older dudes. Like, like that's the life rather, as opposed to like younger, mm -hmm. you know, targeted audience and younger characters and stuff. So I feel like it really has gotten better, but not across the board everywhere, for sure. And there's still going to be people that just don't necessarily intend to be assholes, but don't know how to not be assholes. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, totally, absolutely there for the con for the conversation. Um, and I definitely found some very interesting pieces. Like as I was going through, definitely reminded me like more specifically in here of some of the conversations that I had seen before and kind of gave me a little additional context for it. Really interesting. Yeah. And we'll link this in the in the show notes. We're not going to read out a bunch of stuff yeah. about male social systems. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely some funny pieces, some poignant pieces, some, yeah, some yeah, interesting, yeah. interesting things that I don't think would track for everybody, but absolutely do track for some people. So very interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, I <laughs> one of my I do want to read one because it right made, me, yes, made me really happy. This person uh, whose username is Salami Tsunami. First of all, great username. Absolutely. Uh, said, women underestimate the male ability to spend hours talking about the dumbest shit. Like, I want to read a romance book where the guy is late to the date with a girl and she thinks he's cheating on her or something, but he was actually just hanging out with his bros talking about how unreasonably strong gorillas are and lost track of time. And that is, let's just be clear, we actually probably have experienced that specific word yeah. for word scenario like we've probably been out somewhere and our our people like our our guys are like late yeah because specifically they were talking about this yeah absolutely for sure i have no trouble believing that at 100%. any level 
They just didn't. We've talked about own voices before and and how important they are and i think that this really underscores Mm -hmm. that if nothing else and also beta readers guy just and you can get somewhat get eyes on your stuff people just i understand that there's a lot of like oh i just want to put it out there and if it's good people will like it and you know value of the of the work and that's awesome but also think about the fact that your audience is going to be significantly larger than just you and you have blind spots that's not a criticism. It's just a fact. Everybody has blind spots. You are experiencing life from inside of your head. Other people are experiencing life from inside of their own heads. They have totally different experiences. Get a beta reader. If one of your MCs is a different gender, a different ethnicity, a different culture than you, find someone from that gender, ethnicity, culture, and ask them to just take a look and ask for some feedback. I know that it's hard to ask people to read your work sometimes especially when you're asking or open opening yourself up for critique absolutely it's still important to do so agreed and there are space if you want to stay anonymous there are spaces online where you can anonymously request beta reads and people will anonymously read it and give feedback that way so i think it's really really important super agree moving on to the news news tell me news about the news We've talked about this a little bit before on the podcast. I did not want to talk about social media on this podcast ever, but you convinced me that it was absolutely necessary. Unfortunately, like for better or worse, Annie, it's a necessary evil. We have to. Why did you tell us what's going on with Facebook in the news? Oh, so we've already talked about this over the course of time. But um, so in the world, laws have passed. We knew they were coming. Like we already knew they were passing like in meta- Facebook knew this was coming even earlier than the rest of the country did, presumably, because they already started rolling back their commitment to the news and the content of the news um, and their news tab, etc. So the meta has transitioned off of or is transitioning off of um, focus to news, which we had talked about previously. And now they are fully getting rid of, as of early 2023, all of the remaining human journalists that were um, employed to curate and review their, at least their top headlines, um, and replacing it fully with AI, which had already been the case for pretty much everything else. Um, So there will no longer be any human interaction. So yeah, I mean, this is 100% a response to being forced to pay for content. Oh, you think it's a response before because they don't want to pay for the people to moderate okay. the content? Across the board. Every yeah. every aspect of this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, again, have talked about this. So brief run through of what's been happening so far. Basically. Disclosures. Uh, these are our opinions. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. So Facebook had been kind of slowly deprioritizing uh, some of its news. As more more countries got involved in saying you should pay for the things that you are consuming. Yeah, it just kind of stopped, like quietly stopped pushing the news tab and the news stories onto the main news feed because Australia and a lot of other English-speaking countries were saying things like Facebook is essentially profiting off of the fact that they have our news on their site so Facebook should be paying us. Facebook roundly rejected that. But also, because of its deprioritization, the quality of the news was going way down. The fact checkers were not being heard, not being utilized. And uh, I believe that one was reported on by Axios. Um, This, the article that we're citing today comes from Press Gazette, which is a a UK news news source. Normally... (laughs) I feel like we get really meta on this. I mean, again, it's news. It is. It's it's publishing news. It's news news. It's news about the news. Yeah. Yeah. And this is almost even more meta um, because it's news about people who are posting the news. Um, So so the situation has been kind of building and building. And now Facebook has or meta has decided to uh, take it one step further and get rid of the people on this news team. And this comes kind of amid a lot of other downsizing in other tech companies. Um, But this is just kind of how it's affecting our uh, interests, basically. And as Kaylee said, it's probably directly related to uh, what's been going on in the news. So uh, a bunch of smaller 
U.S. news sources, uh, this also comes to us from Press Gazette, a bunch of smaller U.S. sources have also banded together to negotiate for bargaining power with Google and Facebook to, again, get money from the people who are profiting off of having their news on their site. And uh, as Kaylee said, and this is our opinion, obviously, there's not a lot of Nobody's come out twirling again their villainous yeah, exactly. mustache and said, ha you tried to force me to pay for your work and now I'm not going to show anyone. Yeah, so it seems like these things are related. It, yeah, like, I mean, guys, it's, it seems pretty obvious. Absolutely. The minute any country was like, what if we forced you to pay for the content you're promoting? They're like, well, what if we didn't? And yeah. they're like, no, you got it. And they're like, oops, we're not going to do this anymore. I'm taking my ball and going home. Like, you can't just steal content from people. Anyway, the end. I think that ultimately what we're going to see is, as I said, there's like a big reorg kind of happening about what content social media in general pushes out. And we're going to get into the Twitter drama in a little bit. But I feel like we're going to see a lot of – we're going to see a big shift about what content is going to show up on your feeds moving forward. Yeah, I will say that this was uh, something that I thought was a little interesting or kind of odd for the um, legislation that was passed because Mm -hmm. we did the two different articles about the legislation itself and Mm -hmm. then the response essentially, which again, nobody directly said this is in response to that, but it's obviously in our opinion in response to being forced to pay. They're quietly giving each other significant looks. Exactly. Yeah. Um, That the larger news organizations would not have qualified. In America, at least. Mm -hmm. Um, It says that following recent amendments to the legislation, news organizations with 15,000 or more employees, in effect, the New York Times, Washington Post, and Wall Street Journal, Mm -hmm. do not qualify. Mm -hmm. Which, I guess, they're thinking that they already have enough power to stand on their own, but it just seems like an odd choice that they would... I don't think it's a coincidence that the that those news organizations also already have deals directly with Facebook. Maybe they just were choosing not to. Yeah, I guess it's just odd. It's yeah. I I think that especially because that's a it's a lot of moving parts and just effectively means that people just aren't getting as much quality news on their news feeds, which. You know, some people would argue that that's probably a good thing, that we shouldn't be trying to get our news from social media anyway, but a lot of people only get their news from social media. I would rather them have high quality news. I, well, yeah, and there's opinion. a difference between getting your news on social media as like your aunt Flo has said something or your neighbor Fred put something out there on mm. their wall versus an actual like news article that was right. published and then fact checked. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, an actual like, like in general, like a news report of some kind that is actually published and just available like through this channel those are different things just to i agree be clear. and i'm with you and i don't know how it's going to shake out but we can move into the twitter story um for mm. those of you who mm. aren't on twitter or don't really care about social media we're going to be kind of sticking to this for a while elon musk uh and this is also from press gazette press gazette's been just all over on this news of, news this on week. top of it yeah <laughs> uh elon musk bought twitter for several billion dollars. And we've talked before about how journalists use Twitter a lot, and they use it more than they use any other platform, which effectively gives it a lot of power over the public consciousness. Because journalists are the ones who are distilling the public consciousness down to print. And a lot of times, I should say. And so they're also making contacts on Twitter, getting scoops on Twitter, looking at trends, talking to each other, talking to sources, because Twitter has secure messaging. So getting, you know, a source in their DMs. And that's very important to those journalists, because this is just the way that they've been using it for a really long time. So journalists have been really concerned about the Musk purchase of Twitter, because he essentially came in and said, I want to promote free speech. I want to, you know, stop all this content moderation. And the journalists are saying, like, we're getting death threats with the content moderation. We're getting death threats with the restrictions. How bad is it going to get if you get rid of those? So the Press Gazette kind of uh, weighed in on what what they were going to do. Um, Musk also threatened to force organizations and journalists to pay to be verified, which is one way that journalists, you know, kind of prove who they are to their sources and to each other, which, you know, would be a rounding error, basically, for 
the large organizations like the Washington Post and the New York Times, but for smaller independent journalists or smaller presses, that could be a big chunk of change to get everybody verified and all their different accounts verified. So it's been a lot of grumbling and saying, I don't know what's going to come next. And again, we don't know what's going to come next. I don't think that this specifically is going to do the same thing that the Facebook changes will, which is like, you know, getting rid of overall news on your newsfeed. But I think that a lot of the scoops and the notifications are going to dwindle on Twitter and starts changing. Yeah, I mean, that'll definitely expose a lot of people up to greater, not not identity fraud, but like catfishing. Like where mm-hmm. there are already people today that get confused by fan accounts that are just mm-hmm. even not intending to be a direct, like, like actually m- trying to make people think they're this person or an actor, a celebrity, mm-hmm. a journalist, whatever, but they're already getting confused. It's hard. Ask. It's hard to deal with it. Um, <sighs> Sorry, I'm making a lot of... to this later. <laughs> a lot of sighing here. Apologies. A lot of people are talking about moving over to Tumblr, though, from Twitter. Maybe you'll, maybe we'll get Tumblr back. You know what? Tumblr's trying, so good. They, tum- I will say this, if you are interested, I mean, Tumblr has not the best uh, format for text, mm-hmm. but it does support links. Um, I'm not exactly sure about the secure messaging. I would need to go back and confirm that. But they have recently moved to just a straight, like they're either ad supported or you can just buy like a year of them ad free for like, you know, 50 or 60 bucks. And like, otherwise they don't have the same sort of algorithms. They just can't as other social media content. So it would certainly be the probably as far as it goes, the closest thing, I think, it, not necessarily a direct like relation to Twitter, but probably the closest social media to to Twitter as far as it is that you have to search these things out and then you have to curate your own experience and form your own connections. Mm-hmm. And it's your dashboard. It's not something that other people are, are trying to feed you to make a buck. I so. agree. There were there were a lot of grumblings on Twitter of people saying either Mastodon, which looks like a Discord sort of clone, mm-hmm. and or Tumblr. You know, it's just like why not just Discord and Tumblr? Because those mm-hmm. <laughs> those the things where where I'm already they, Discord's they not exist. really social media, but yeah. it's you know like the old chat rooms, which I think is where the internet really shines. Honestly, uh-huh. uh, you were never going to join Twitter, so it doesn't really matter. But um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just like I can only do so much. I haven't Agreed. even been on no, Tumblr much lately, I'm so with like you, you know. Um, it goes in cycles. Yeah. So uh, for the free speech advocates out there, they think that like all of these fears are overblown, you know, and people should be allowed to be- to submit death threats. To submit death threats. That's what they think. Um, and I feel like, you know, even 4chan and 8chan, which have been absolutely inundated with the free speech people, have also adopted content moderation because at a certain point, it's not sustainable and it's harmful. So I I don't know. I can't imagine that Twitter has a future that way when even things like 8chan, I can't imagine that Twitter would go very far with it either. But I don't know. Uh, Moving on to ads. Uh, We, I don't like talking about marketing just because I find marketing to be weird and manipulative, but ads are extremely important to the publishing industry. If you are a regular listener of podcasts, you know most podcasts are ad supported. Ours is not. Others are and they want to make a living and that's totally their right and privilege. But also many newspapers, many magazines, uh, even comic books are propped up by ads and ad sales. So we do have to talk about that when we talk about publishing. And we've talked about this a little bit previously about ad blocks and what was the the particular service that allows you to elect certain content to come through your ad block. I can't remember what that I don't remember was either. Called. I'll have to I will I'll we'll look it up. We'll include it in the links to this. Okay. But the particular are you talking about the Press Gazette article right now? Is that yes. your intro to that? Sorry, I was, <laughs> no, I was in the middle fine. of a drink. <laughs> no worries, you're good. So um, what Annie wanted to or was was introducing here was the um, is a Press Gazette article that was published October, very early in October, um, related to um, just publishers that are currently being pressured by advertisers um, related to their content because ad block lists are hurting the bottom line. Um, and then they're just, re- it's just like a review of, I'm trying not to f- like just come out and just be like, well, they're scummy assholes because they're not, but also a little bit that they are. Um, 
it's just like nobody's surprised that advertisers are averse to real content, in my opinion, or they shouldn't be because it means that somebody's going to get offended. And that means somebody's not going to buy their thing. Well, yes, if you advertise on a news site, go figure, people are going there for news, whether they're there to agree with the news or they're there to be offended by the news. Like, it is going to be one of those two things. Or a combination, perhaps even so. They'll be very confused in their response and how they feel about your advertisement content. So, Annie, what what did you think about this? Well, I mean, I can see where they're coming from. You know, nobody wants to talk about war atrocities. Like, there's no one who's, like, getting pleasure. Well, I'm. no one is getting pleasure out of this. This is not something that anyone is happy about. But it is really, really important for the news to cover it. And the advertisers don't want to be on a page with a picture of war atrocities. And I can see both sides to this. But also, like, if this is the only way that news is getting funded, you have an ethical obligation to support the news. I, I'm sorry. Like, may- that's my opinion. But uh, I, I agreed with Kaylee. Like, They're going there for the news. They're going to feel how they're going to feel about the news, and they're going to feel how they feel about the advertisers. It's not something you can control. Most people can separate that in their head, I feel like. So uh, what the advertisers are saying is they want – they're going to the news orgs and saying, stop publishing this kind of stuff, which is frankly ridiculous. Not going to happen. Yeah. Nor should it. It shouldn't happen. Absolutely not. Um, So these new CEOs talked at at a conference about this issue and these were uh news organizations in the uk but this is also happening in the us as well and uh another article that came on close on the heels of this was a wired story um talking about how marketing is so broken right now just because of the way (laughs) the way that these clicks are sold so the way that marketing essentially works right now is that people are selling numbers of clicks So you go to the New York Times and you say, hey, I want to put my ad on your site. The New York Times says, okay, we can guarantee X number of clicks. You will pay us for those numbers of clicks. And so they do. Um, There are services out there that are saying, you know, okay, well, I can just write a program that clicks. Will I also get paid for the clicks? Yes, it turns out. And then they do. So there's just like these bots going around selling themselves, essentially, to get clicks or to to provide clicks and then the the advertisers are getting mad and it's like you got what you paid for you got clicks like what did you what did you want from us <laughs> clicks cuz that's what you got so it's it's all like a what's that thing where it just like keeps spiraling down into a infinity a death spiral no no <laughs> it's like it's like a visual like a puzzle and it just keeps spiraling down to infinity. Oh no, I don't know. It's like a like one of those like a like a mirror thing, and it just go anyway. An Escher. MC I guess Escher. yeah, it's like an Escher thing where it's just like they're paying for the clicks, but the clicks are paying for the ads, and then the ads are are not real, and then the, the bots aren't real, and then the clicks aren't real, and it's like none of the points real. matter. <laughs> yeah, right. And you're just like awesome. So this doesn't work. This is ridiculous. And I find that that's, that I felt was very much related because that's also a thing that the advertisers are mad about. But it's like, how do you expect anyone to be able to contend with that? Yeah, I mean, present a better option, I guess. Like, if you have, if you're mad about the way that it's set up now, then how do you want it set up? Yeah. So advertisers are just mad in general, basically, yeah. is the answer here. <laughs> It was interesting. It was like, yeah, they're like, they're like on the panels, like we support the news, but also we don't want our content on the news. Like, well, then we won't publish news. They're like, no, no, we want the news. No, you don't. Yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, it's. I don't know what the solution is. Like, I think that they're absolutely right. Like, if I am reading an article about you know war atrocities, I also don't want to see an ad for Verizon. That's Fair. realistic. Fair. But in that case, like you're talking about different tiers of news and then how that, do you break it down? Yeah, like that, that tier of news also needs to get paid for. It also needs to be supported. And again, the dirty little secret of publishing right now is that a lot of it is ad supported. So what do we do? And I do appreciate that. Reach, uh, Chief Revenue Officer, Piers North. Mm-hmm. Um, he said Reach that, is a UK publisher. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Reach is one of the publishers. Um, that was 
con- you know, contributing to this particular like panel, um, said that it was up to the news brands and marketers to find the answer. Yeah. Um, he said in his quote, he said that we can't expect someone to rescue us. We've got to figure it out. So I think that's at least helpful that they are acknowledging that it is something that they have to come together to solve. Right. Um, whether or not that answer is and that that collaboration and cooperation is uh starting now or if it's going to come in the future who knows best guess moving on to one of our favorite sections marginalized people killing it in publishing yeah congratulations to kwami mbalia uh who will be heading a new imprint at disney focusing on black joy and black entertainment stories uh, this is a huge hole in the children's book market, and I am super excited to see that this is getting the recognition that it deserves. So many, and this is something we talked about before, like so many narratives about people of color is about suffering and stuff. And, and you know, we don't want that for kids. Mm-hmm. We don't want that to be like the future that they see for themselves exclusively. Like suffering and pain exist, but also joy exists for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And like you, you can't separate like your happiness from your tragedies. Like nobody's only suffering all the time. Absolutely. Uh, So this is a new imprint called Freedom Fire from Kwembe Mbalia. Uh, He was the best-selling author of the Tristan Strong trilogy, and it is moving over to the Disney Hyperion Company. So congratulations to that whole imprint. Uh, Imprints don't exist just on one person. It's a whole team. So congratulations to all of you all. Keep on sparkling. Thank you so much for what you're uh, bringing to kids. Everybody should, should have a chance to see themselves happy and successful. Yes. Kaylee, do you have a Kaylee Coda for us for this episode? Oh, man. Um, critical thought, guys. Like, it's helpful. It really is. Like, uh, I, we talked about this a little bit, and it's come back a few times. Like, you know, with the people that are, like, putting on their, you know, glasses and big noses and mustaches and being like, we're not being villains. We're just, this just happened to come at the same time as the thing. Like, for the school newspaper and for Meta and for this, uh, the, the, legislation you know like all of that like come on let's like let's be be critical don't necessarily be uh cynical but be critical you know you can be both i'm just saying like at the very least like put some thought into what you're doing but also like this also applies to like our quote unquote liberal like youth and our liberal like non-youth i guess because i don't know what that math out maths out to anymore as far as age range but like, don't steal from your your friends. Don't steal from your people that are online with you and that are trying to create content. Like, you know, you know when what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, that's probably all I got. Thanks for listening to the Ink Sync. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. We are on all major platforms. We are also available on Anchor and Spotify with sponsorships. You can sponsor us for as low as 99 cents a month if you want. But <laughs> we highly, highly encourage you to go check out our bookshop page. That link will be in the show notes. And you can find us on Twitter, on Instagram. And uh, thank you, Abby. Thank you, Abby. We'll see you next time.